Hi, my name is Ron, and uh, I'm going to tell you about five new philosophers current today that you would love to know about. All right, Christian? All right, so philosophers, Greek and German guys from history who ask increasingly more annoying questions. Um, but there are other things philosophers can be. They can be not Greek or German. So I'm going to tell you about five of them. Well, the first one is Colin McGinn. And Colin McGinn is the son of English coal miners, and he was studying to be a psychologist, and at the last minute decided, hey, I want to be a philosopher at Oxford, and he just did it, and he excelled at it, which he details in an autobiography called The Making of a Philosopher. He's mainly a technical innovator in the philosophy of language, but he does have one big far-reaching idea, and it's called cognitive closure. And this is basically the idea, what if the mind-body problem, what a mind is and what a brain is, is unsolvable? What for philosophy then? He dares to ask that question. Uh, his basic idea is an analogy. Monkeys didn't learn how to write. Dogs didn't have to learn how to do math. We don't have to learn how to do consciousness. What if it's a problem we shouldn't be concerned with? Oxford Brit, Derek Parfit, a lot of times wakes up in the morning the same way you are right now, wondering who the hell he is. Because he has transient global amnesia. But this doesn't handicap him from philosophy. It actually helps him think about concepts like what a person is. He imagines a scenario where like a Star Trek transporter, instead of wiping you away and making you appear somewhere else, doesn't wipe you away for a few days. So there's two of you at, for a while. He starts to elaborate on the idea that maybe the idea of identity is a fiction. It's just a name that we call a moniker, like for a sports team or organization. It's just overlapping states. Another idea of his is exploring utilitarianism, where he comes up with the idea that maybe the idea of an infinite or large number of people living just above poverty actually produces more happiness than having any group that lives like kings. Very controversial idea. He calls it the repugnant conclusion. And another idea that he has is talking about how rational ethics, he, he examines how acting out of interest for your kid or your loved one or justice often produces results contrary to your goals. Another contrary idea. Slavoj Žižek is a part of a Slovenian school of philosophers who actually have to train to be Lacanian psychoanalysts before they can be a philosopher. And his one goal is to use Lacan as a tool to reactualize German idealism. Okay, so what the hell does that mean? Um, German idealism, according to Zizek, says that truths about us are outside in the world. We have to look in the world that we perceive to see anything that we want to know about us. He uses Lacan's terms to psychoanalyze that about us out there like there was a structure underneath, like an unconscious. For example, George Bailey in It's a Wonderful Life gets a chance to see the world without him, the world around him without him in it, filtering it. And uh, it's horrifying to him. And Zizek calls this unconscious that Bailey would discover the real after Lacan. So Zizek says he's psychoanalyzing our culture and showing us that a lot of things that we take for granted, like freedoms, are actually a pervasive ideology that tells us how to think. His philosophy is actually a political act because it's tricking you into reconsider freedom. Alain Badu is a French philosopher, and he has a book called Being an Event, and in it are 37 meditations, or chapters, some mathematical, some philosophical, and some just about historical figures. And he likes to describe all of existence as multiplicities within multiplicities. Everything can be described, but with infinite set theory about infinite sets, but now meaningless infinite sets inside infinite sets. But he also talks about another realm of existence called the event. And the event is something that only humans do, and we treat as if it was real, and we do it by being subjective to it. We give it fidelity, we show it faith, like St. Paul here, or he talks about the French revolutionaries, or Arnold Schoenberg, Schoenberg with 12-tone theory. The last philosopher is actually a group itself, and these are the object-oriented ontologists and the speculative realists. They are all in their 40s or younger, and they all blog about their works. In the middle, you see Graham Harmon on the right and Kenton Mayasu, a student of Badu's on the right. And Harmon talks about a metaphysics of everything being described as a unique object. And he means everything. He means like unicorns, a dream of a unicorn. These are all separate objects. Mayasu talks about correlationism, saying that philosophy's trend toward looking at everything from a human perspective is a mistake. And we should think about philosophical ideas without humans in the picture. There's a couple more in this group. Jane Bennett teaches at Hopkins, and Ian Bogos is a game theorist of computer games. He's also in this group. But just remember that they talk about new metaphysics and correlationism. So this was a lot, I know, in five minutes. But if you're interested in learning more, I can suggest two ways. One is Zizek has many documentaries made about him. They're extremely entertaining. And one is helpfully named Zizek. 
And uh, Colin McGinn has an autobiography that I said before called The Making of a Philosopher, where he talks about a lot of modern philosophy, and it'll bring you into it. So thank you for listening. All right.